at a coral reef, there are a number of organisms whose growth can come at the expense of corals, such as algae which can grow over the coral and then thus block light from reaching the zooxanthellae, from invertebrates which bore into the corals, um, and grazers which feed on the corals. The overfishing of a coral reef often removes species of fish which help keep these other organisms in check. And so sea urchins, snails, and algae become more prevalent in the aftermath of overfishing, and this is detrimental to the growth of corals. There are also destructive techniques in fishing, such as the use of dynamite, which not only kills fish, but damages reefs as well. Some individuals fishing for tropical fish for aquariums use cyanide to stun the fish, but this accumulates and is detrimental to coral growth. Nets which drag along the bottom can damage reefs and reduce coral reefs to rubble. Damaged reefs will grow less than a healthy reef. Corals can be negatively affected by nutrient runoff as well. If an area undergoes deforestation, then increased erosion will bring more sediment into ocean water. Sewage can be discharged directly into ocean water, and this is especially prevalent near islands because many islands are formed from old coral reefs and so lack soil, which is very absorbent, and so much of the sewage is discharged uh, directly into uh, the ocean. This nutrient runoff may include chemicals which will damage uh, corals. It increases the turbidity of water, thus decreasing the light available for photosynthesis. Sediments can accumulate on corals, also reducing light avail availability for photosynthesis. Sewage and fertilizers will encourage microbial growth, which decreases oxygen levels, and will en encourage the growth of algae, which can then cover a coral and make photosynthesis more difficult for the coral itself. The chemicals in the nutrient runoff may affect the biochemical balance of the ocean water and make the formation of calcium carbonate more difficult. These images depict Christmas tree worms, which are tube boring polychaete worms. They can bore tubes into coral and withdraw suddenly into it as retract the portion of their body which is filter feeding above the surface of the coral. There are a number of other animals which can bore into living and dead coral and to graze on coral, such as sea urchins, snails, and sponges. While in a healthy reef, there is a balance between these animals which cause bioerosion and the growth of new coral. In areas where overfishing removes many of the predators of some of these animals, then there can be overpopulations of these grazers and borers, and thus an excess of bioerosion on coral reefs. There are a number of other aspects of human activity which are detrimental to coral growth as well, such as ozone depletion, uh, the use of sunscreens which can contain certain chemicals which affect corals and others. Unfortunately, many of these can act synergistically so that uh, one factor which would not have caused the uh, deterioration or, or death of corals in and of itself may weaken a coral, making it more resistant to disease or more vulnerable to some other factor. And so all of these factors are simultaneously affecting the corals of the world. Some are more vulnerable than others, but globally there has been an increase in coral bleaching and a decrease in coral growth, which is quite serious given the importance of coral reefs to both marine biodiversity and human populations.